body found in the field belonged to a 14-year-old girl named Jeanne Boulet. She had been watching over her sheep when something attacked. Whatever it was, tore her apart. This was the summer of 1764 in the French province of Gévaudan, a rural land insulated from an increasingly modern outside world and tucked away in the hills of southern France. Medieval villages speckled its countryside, where ancient folklore lived on among its peasantry. Life here was generally quiet. But just a month after Boulet's death, a 15-year-old girl was attacked and killed. A few weeks later, another violent attack left a teenage boy dead. The killer didn't stop. One brisk September day, a woman in her 30s stood outside as the sun set. She sensed danger, but it was too late. Home was just barely too far away. She was half-eaten on her own doorstep. Three others were killed in the same month. Witnesses and newspapers described the devilish creature, which liked to sever the heads and eat the throats of its victims. Peasants claimed it looked like an enormous wolf, which were common in France, but that it had rust-colored fur, a long, tasseled tail, a black stripe along its spine, and a muzzle like a pig. Whatever it was, the locals wanted revenge. But peasants weren't permitted to have firearms, and their attempts to hunt with rocks and shovels were unfruitful. Brutal attacks continued and the press churned out stories, enthralling all of France with tales of a mysterious monster slaughtering villagers. By November, the crisis had rattled the cage of the local government. Authorities assigned the infantry leader, Captain Jean-Baptiste Duhamel, to kill it. When a few children found their mother's half-eaten body in a field, Duhamel ordered them to not bury her yet. His men patrolled the area for two days, hoping the beast would return to finish its meal. It didn't. Duhamel also knew the beast preyed on women and children, so he had his troops wear wigs and old skirts and accompany children to herd cattle. After 12 days across eight villages, the beast didn't show. If Duhamel couldn't lure the beast, he needed to find it, even if it meant scouring every inch of Gévaudan. He spent the winter rousing volunteers for his quest. He claimed this animal is a monster whose father is a lion. It remains open what the mother is. On February 7th of 1765, 20,000 hunters, soldiers, and peasants set out across the icy corners of Gévaudan. They trudged through forests and caves until finally a party of peasants spotted it trotting into the woods. Something was in its mouth. They sprinted after it, but it darted into the forest, dropping its meal, the head of a 14-year-old girl. After the four-day hunt, the beast was still out there. Duhamel had failed, and the court of King Louis XV sent a dispatch to replace him with the famed wolf hunter Jean-Charles Dinval. He was the man who liberated Normandy from thousands of wolves. Now, the lure of adventure, riches, and fame brought him to Gévaudan. A grizzled veteran in his 60s, he arrived with his son Jean-Francois. In their polished French, they boasted that the beast would be dead in two weeks. But the heavy snow, cliffs, marshes, and dense forests of Gévaudan quelled their arrogance and turned the hunt into a dizzying chase. The number of decapitated and half-eaten villagers multiplied. The beast killed 29 villagers in just the first three months of 1765. Markets and fairs were deserted. Peasants didn't dare venture outside alone. Some men claimed to have shot the beast before watching it escape into the woods. The Dinvals, on the other hand, weren't making any progress. After another string of attacks in late May, the furious king replaced them with his personal hunting assistant, the royal gunbearer, Francois Antoine. Antoine journeyed south, still open to the possibility that the beast was simply a pack of common wolves passing through the region. But in Gévaudan, he examined the gruesome leftovers of beast attacks. That fall, over a year after the first attack, Antoine's men spotted a large wolf near a monastery. The next morning, he positioned gunmen along the forest edge. Soon, something came into his view. Fifty paces away was the wolf. Antoine steadied his musket and squeezed the trigger. When the smoke cleared, the beast lay on the ground. He had struck it in the eye. As he celebrated, the animal picked itself back up and charged at him. Antoine had no time to reload. Then another officer nearby fired his carbine. The creature stumbled and fell to the ground, dead. It lacked the black striped bushy tail and talons described in attack reports, but Antoine's crew formally questioned attack survivors, who accepted it as the same animal. It was stuffed and delivered to the royal palace at Versailles. 
King Louis XV proudly displayed the vanquished animal in his court, and by October, ordinary citizens of Paris could pay a small admission fee to behold the Beast of Gévaudan. Francois Antoine became a hero, and life in Gévaudan was peaceful again. The ground froze and winter neared. There were, of course, a handful of peasants who claimed new beast sightings, but they were dismissed. Authorities said that Gévaudan was safe. Then, on December 2nd, something attacked two boys in a field. They survived and claimed it was the beast. A few weeks later, the creature came across an 11-year-old girl and ate her. A witness reported that the animal was much larger than a wolf and had a black stripe down its back. Local officials announced there was now no doubt the beast was still alive. Antoine had killed the wrong animal. To the crown and the press, it didn't matter. They had lost interest even as the beast attacks continued for the next year and a half. In the summer of 1767, a group of 300 villagers set out into the forest near the village of Uver. A large wolf leapt out from the brush, and a local innkeeper named Jean Chastel fired and killed it. Its head was monstrous, and its coat unusually red and gray, like those old eyewitness accounts had claimed. Local authorities interviewed hundreds of people who agreed Chastel had indeed killed the one true beast. Chastel traveled north with his taxidermied trophy and presented it at Versailles, where the king insulted the peasant and demanded he bury the rotting animal he had proudly delivered. Humiliated by the royal court, Chastel remained a folk hero to the people of Gévaudan, a brave peasant who delivered justice when the indifferent aristocrats of Versailles could not. The monster that killed over a hundred people between 1764 and 1767 was no more. But true stories rarely tie up so neatly. Many educated Europeans began to see the beast as a lie, a symbol of a superstitious bygone era. Immanuel Kant scoffed that rural women and children had convinced a substantial number of intelligent men to take a common wolf for a hyena. Others claimed that no one beast ever existed, that paranoia had gripped illiterate peasants and caused them to drum up fantasies in the face of a wolf infestation. A news writer wrote in 1766, It is clear today that we were wrong to attribute to a single wolf all the ravages committed in the Gévaudan. After all, the two animals touted as the true beasts were simply larger than average wolves. Even before Antoine killed his beasts, he had doubts that there really was one creature responsible for all the bloodshed. It's possible that the pressure of a king's quest and the expectations of a nation caused him to exaggerate his story and boldly claimed he had found the one beast and slain it. In truth, the hunt for the beast's identity never ended. In 2016, biologist Carl Hans Tock argued that eyewitness records actually describe an adolescent male lion, which could have escaped from an exotic animal display called a menagerie, popular attractions in 18th century France. The flat head, reddish fur, wide build, a dark line along the spine, a tassel on the tail, and the strength and aggression to attack and carry off adult victims. Captain Duhamel had once claimed that the beast was half lion. Talk points out that wolves were common in Gévaudan and would have easily been recognized by the locals. What about the peasants who verified the bodies of those wolves as the true beast? Perhaps their desperation to end the hunt in the weight of a royal investigation pushed them to tell investigators what they wanted to hear. Historians' opinions on the beast tend to be that the episode was simply a series of attacks by wolves. That seems most likely. But even legends start somewhere. Maybe some of the attacks did come at the jaws of one especially monstrous wolf or an escaped lion. Regardless, the beast of Gévaudan left its mark on folklore and mythology. The villages of present-day Gévaudan still honor the peasants who stood up to the beast, and the popular trope that werewolves can only be killed by silver has its origin in a legend that Jean Chastel killed the beast of Gévaudan with a silver bullet. In the end, it's impossible to say for certain what really terrorized Gévaudan between 1764 and 1767. And maybe the story's better that way. So let us know in the comments what you think the beast was. Was it a lion? Was it just a pack of wolves? What do you think? And always, if you like what you're seeing, make sure to subscribe and consider donating to our Patreon account.